Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we're going to talk about 7.1, where we will first learn about the vocab for circles. Let's have a look. We know uh, what is a circle, but let's actually have a look at the definition of circle in geometry. It is the set of all points in a plane that are equal distant from a given point, which is called the center of circle. And when we actually want to write circle, we use this notation right here. We just basically draw a little circle with a center and then put a letter. And in this case, you can put letter A, letter B, letter C, whatever. And that is called circle A or circle P. And all circles are actually similar. If we actually look at that, that definition and we think about how we use a compass, it is basically you have one point, you have a distance, and you actually draw a circle that all the lines are actually the same distance. So that's how we get the definition for a circle. Next, radius. Radius is the segment whose end point are the center and any point on the circle. So center is right here, any point on the circle. So that's a radius, that's a radius, that's a radius. And as you can see, a circle have infinitely many radius, radii. And radii is actually the plural form of radius. Diameter, we use letter D to present. And diameter basically is twice of radius. So D equals to 2R. Next, chord. Chord is a segment whose end points are on the circle. So you can see this one right here. These are the end points. They're both on the circle, and that is a chord. So we got a question, is diameter a chord? And if you actually look at the diameter, well, the end points are right here, and they are on the circle. So yes, it is a chord, and it's actually the longest chord in the circle. Then we have circumference and radius. These are the formulas. Circumference, we use letter C, and that is 2 pi r. Also, since 2r is basically a d, we can also do pi d. For area, it is a equals pi r squared. Now let's move on and see more. Secant. Secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. Let's see one point here, one point here. So that is a secant. Next. But to the opposite of that, we also, of course, have something that only touched the circle at one point, and that is called a tangent. It is a line, ray, or segment that intersects the circle at exactly one point. In this case, the point is right here. And the tangent line AE, we see that represents a line. The tangent line segment, which is right here, AB, we use a line segment to represent. The tangent array, which is right here, all of these, they're all called tangents. Point of tangency, the point where the tangent line intersects with the circle. So this point B right here, that's what it's referring to. That is the point of tangency. And last, we have common tangent, which is a line, ray, or segment that is tangent to two circles. We'll actually have a look at some examples about that to see how circles can share the same tangent. First, let's start with uh, some identification, practice our vocab. So we see AC, which is right here, M point on the circle, and C is the center, so that is a And because it's actually uh, one M point is the center, the other M point is on the circle. AB, right here, and that is a diameter. And the reason, because both M points are actually on the circle, and it's also go through, going through the center right there. Next, we see this is a ray, and that is D, E, from D to E. And that clearly is only touching the circle at one point. That is going to be called tangent ray, to be more specific. Or we can just call it tangent. A, E. Well, A, E is right here, and it's touching, going through a circle with two points. That's the reason why it is a secant. Next, AG. We can see this is a line segment right there. And even though it is on A, it is the same as AE. Uh, it's part of AE, but it's not a secant because within the circle, both endpoints are actually on the circle. So that is called a. Next, name a tangent segment. Uh, careful, we're naming segment, which means we've got to find the end points. We have a couple options. It could be DE, or it could be EE. Or it could even be D, 
all of these line segments, they actually only touch the circle at one point. Next, example two. How many common tangents do the circle have? Uh, you can pause here and try to think, to draw some lines, test them out. Uh, the line need to be only touching each circle at one point. Now, number uh, four, first one, A. I can draw a line right here that is going through the circle just at one point. I can draw the line right here going through just one point. Or here's something that's kind of special for that first one. I can also draw a line kind of like right there going through the circle once. Or I can do the other way. I can draw the line like right there. That's also going through just one circle. So there are four different common tangents. And this one, the first two are kind of similar. So the, uh, the lines are right here. And another line like right here. You can see the circles are kind of touching, which means if I actually just go through that one point they're touching, that also is the tangent line right there. Next, C. Well, they're actually crossing each other, so there's no tangent in between. So it's right here, one. And the other one is kind of like right here. And that's two. And this one was three. That's example two. Example three. D is 10.2 inches. Find the circumference and the area. And the circumference is going to be 10.2. And since that's D, which is pi D, so we just need to pi by pi. And let's actually use a uh, our calculator and just press the pi button. We're not going to round the pi. We'll round it at the very end. So let's actually uh, have a look. That is going to give us 32. round to nearest 10, 6, uh, actually 7 inches. As for the area, area is since the equation is pi r squared, we actually need to find r first. Since d is 10.2, uh, that means my R has to be 10.2 divided by 2, which is 5.5 inches. So I can do 5 times 5.1 squared. And that, if you put in the calculator, that's going to give us 81.7. Don't forget our unit, inch square. That is example 3. Next, example 4. Uh, the area is actually given, it's asking you to find the diameter and round to the nearest tenth. Diameter and circumference. So let's first find the diameter. The area is pi r square, which is 490.9. And we're actually going to use that number to divide it by pi and see what we're going to get. r square, if we divide both sides by pi, That's going to give us r square, which is going to be 56.258231. I'm just going to keep uh, as many digits as I can. And then I'm going to actually square root that number. And that is going to give me r equals 12.5, which means my d is twice of r, so it's going to be 25 meter. And my circumference is pi d, so I can just use pi times 25, and that is going to give me 78.5, also meter. And that's example four. Next, we have more vocab to actually look at. So first one, we have something called a central angle. An angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So like right here, that's the center of the circle. And the sides are two radii, and right here, these two. So the central angle is the angle that's using the center as the vertex, so it's this one. The sum of all central angle is 360 degrees. So all the angles right here, that's 360 degrees. Arc. Arc is a section on the circumference, which means it's this actually the circle part we draw, and one part, like this part AD, could actually be an arc. And for arc, we have two different kinds. We have a major arc and a minor arc. So minor arc is an arc whose measurement is less than 180. And if you're like, wait, how do I know if it's 180? Well, if it's a diameter, you can clearly see that's a straight line. So that is going to be 
180 degrees. So minor arc is basically the two radii is not going to form a diameter. It's going to be uh, a bit smaller than that. Major arc is an arc whose measurement is more than 180. And semicircle is an arc whose measurement is exactly 180, which means this is going to be using a diameter. So if you look at the uh, figure on the right, this little part AB, that's clearly less than 180, so that's going to be minor arc. And the major arc is this ADB. Well, you can see they are named differently. So now let's talk about the naming for different arcs. Minor arc are named by their end points. So the end points are right here, A and B. And major arc and semicircle are actually named by their end point and another point on that part of the arc. So in that case, you see A, I know this is the bigger one I want to name. There's a point D I can use. So I'm going to call that arc A, D, B. So for sure, it's, it's going to have more than two letters. That's how we name major arc and minor arc. Next, now let's talk about the measurement of a minor arc and the measurement of a uh, major arc. So the measure of a minor arc is actually the same as the measure of a central angle. So you can see this arc right here, arc AB, is exactly 50 degrees, the same as the central angle. And something to be careful with, when you see this little m, it's actually just it's talking about the measurement of the arc, which is going to end up being an angle. Uh, please don't confuse that with the arc length we will talk about in the next lesson. But M means the measurement, especially for the angle. Next, measurement of major arc. So, for example, this ADB, which is actually this part as the central angle, that is going to be 360 minus this little 50 that we already know. It's going to end up being 310. And that is the measure of a major arc. Next, we have something that's similar to... Um, angle addition postulate is called arc addition postulate. Basically, if the measurement of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs, adjacent means well, they're next to each other, we can just add them up. So like A, B, C, which is right here, this part is the same as A, B plus B, C. So that means we can actually add them because they are basically just talking about the angle, the central angle. And we have two more inscribed angle. An angle whose vertex is on the circle. So vertex right here, this is the vertex that's on the circle, and the sides contain cores of the circle. So this is a chord, and that is a chord, which is why this angle right here, and that is called inscribed angle. Intercepted arc. So as soon as we have this inscribed angle, if we extend the line, we can clearly see there's a little arc and the arc is right here, and that arc is lying on in the interior of this inscribed angle that we have, and the endpoints are actually on the angle, and that is called the intercepted arc. We will learn more about that in 7.2. Now let's have a look at some examples. Find a measure of each arc of uh, circle P where RT is a diameter. So if RT is a diameter, we already know this part has to be 180 degrees. First, let's find R, RS, which is right here, the central angle. That is going to be 110 degrees. And let's write a little M in the front. Next, little M in the front, RTS. Actually, is this portion RTS. You can see that's actually the major arc, uh, which is actually compensating the 110. That is going to be 360 minus 110 going to be 250 degrees. Next, RST. RST, right here. And we can clearly see, since that is a diameter, this is a semicircle, so that's going to be 180 degrees. That's example five. Now, our last one, example six. Identify a given arc as a major arc, or minor arc, or semicircle. Find a measure. Let's start with TQ. TQ is right here, and as the central angle is 20 degrees, so that is going to be a minor arc. QRT. Uh, QRT is right here. QRT, oh, that is a lot bigger. So that is going to be, uh, since this is 120, that has to be 120 degrees. 
so we can add them together 80 plus 20 plus 60 160 degrees um actually that is not going to be 120 since it's not a straight line uh actually because the whole thing is 360 or 140 that's um 120 they all add together to be 260 that is going to be a hundred so 100 degrees all together add up to 240 degrees and that is a major it's bigger than 180. next t q r t q r is right here t q r well 120 plus 60 that is 180 which is a semicircle Next, QS. QS is right here. Let's see, where's QS? QS. Remember, even though I can go the other way, but QS is making sure it's a minor arc because it only has two letters. That is going to be 160, plus 160 degrees, which is a minor arc. Which means you can actually look at the amount of letters to tell if it's a major arc or a minor arc. And next, I can do TS, which is right here. This little part that is just 80 degrees. I can actually change to a different color. It is just 80 degrees. That is a minor arc. Last, R, S, and T. And this time, I'm going to do R, S, T which is right here that is 100 plus 80 which is 180 degrees and that is going to be a side my circle that is everything for 7.18 thank you